Okay, so now we're going to talk about interviewing. And interviewing is another one of those topics that uh, I enjoy uh, presenting on. And that's because I firmly believe that interviewing is a skill. And just like communication, just like public speaking, anything that is a skill means by its very nature, if we practice it, we can become better at it. And interviewing, if we're practiced and polished, if we become better at it, then the likelihood, that has real world consequences for us. That means that the likelihood of us being able to get a, a job, a career uh, that we uh, really want is uh, significantly increased. So I enjoy having this conversation and lecture with students. Over the years, students have asked me the same types of interview questions over and over again. And so I put together this uh, PowerPoint lecture uh, that I give in terms of speaking and engagements with students uh, because I see the same types of questions. Um, and then there's also some basic fundamentals about interviewing that we often overlook. So I hope in today's lecture that you uh, find some information that is beneficial to you uh, as you move forward uh, and interview for jobs and careers. Let's get started. So I think a common mistake that students make is with their preparation. And this starts uh, oftentimes when someone calls and, or emails and offers you the, the opportunity to interview for a job. So uh, oftentimes someone, someone will email, someone will call and they'll say, uh, you know, congratulations, we'd like to move forward with you, forward with you. Um, when would you be available to come in and sit down for a formal interview? And they will offer you, you know, a selection of days and then they'll say which of these times work for you. A common mistake that students make is they're super excited uh, about getting the opportunity for an interview and they schedule that interview too soon. So if an employer calls and say it's a Monday and they offer you, they say, well, we actually have some openings tomorrow, some time available tomorrow. Would you be available uh, tomorrow um, or Friday? Uh, we also have some time on Friday. Which of those work for you? A lot of times students, because they're excited, they'll, they'll say, oh yeah, tomorrow works great. I'd love to meet with you tomorrow. Well, you shouldn't. You should always take that Friday um, or that later day or somewhere uh, in between because you need time. You need to time to prepare. Uh, you need time to practice. You need time to conduct research. Uh, all of that takes time. And if uh, you jump at a interview date that's too soon, it can actually hurt you and hurt your chances of actually getting that job. So you should prepare. You need time to start that preparation. I mean, you need time to time to do that. And so don't put it off to the last minute either. So now you've built in a buffer. Maybe uh, you're going to interview a week out and you say, OK, well, I'm going to wait until Thursday or Friday to start, uh, you know, practicing and doing my research for that interview on Monday. No, you need to start the, the moment uh, that you get off the phone, right? You, once your um, excitedness wears down, you need to start that preparation and start that process early because the people who do well, people who do most successful are going to be the ones who are the most prepared. You need to research the organization, right? You need to know what the core values are of that organization. You need to know the basics. Where are they located? How many employees do they have? Uh, what's the what's their values on diversity? Uh, what's their mission statement, right? So here's a list of the organizations that I've worked for. I started off right out of college with Citigroup. I went over to Bank of America where I worked in mortgages, and then I worked my way up to being a sales manager there where I was 23 years old and managing a um, local branch in the Charlotte, North Carolina area that had about 30 employees. I moved on to Wells Fargo where I was an investment banker, uh, and most recently, I was a professor um, at the University of Wisconsin uh, in Madison. And so you need to know a little bit about those organizations, right? So uh, go to the websites, conduct some research, but also look for research outside of those company websites, right? So the, company, the company's perspective is going to be tainted. It's going to be slanted uh, to a very specific point of view. So you can conduct some research uh, on the industry, some knowledge about the industry, and from, from some outside sources, and that will help you uh, in your preparation as well. 
Now the first thing that you need to do is research the interviewer or the interviewers. And so this starts with a simple question that you need to ask uh, when, they, when the company contacts you uh, to set up the interview. Uh, you can call back and ask this if you forget, but it's so much easier if you just remember anytime you're, you're asked uh, to interview for a company, ask this question. Say, I would I, absolutely, I'd be very excited to sit down um, and interview with you for this position. Can you tell me a little bit about the interview? Will I be meeting with, um, with one person or will it be a group interview, right? Um, and they'll tell you, they'll say, well, it's going to be, most likely, it's going to be myself and my colleague, right? Or, nope, it's just going to be me. And so that question there is critical and key to your, uh, the start of your research process. So you need to know, you know, who, who's going to be interviewing you? Is it going to be one person or if it's going to be a group? Because your preparation can vary a little bit there. Uh, you don't want to walk into an interview and be shocked that there are five people in the room to interview you. That could make you very nervous and anxious if you were expecting only one person to be there. So knowing that there are a lot of people there uh, ahead of time will help you uh, in terms of anxiousness and anxiety. If it is just one person, of course, it's going to be much easier to actually research some information on that person. So you can take a look at their background. You can take um, a look at what they do with the company, um, and that will give you some, uh, some, some potential information and research that you can use uh, as the interview progresses, and we'll talk about that in a bit. So it's always good to, as you get started, um, when you shake someone's hand that you, uh, if you have some research, you know a little bit about them, then you're going to have some, uh, the opportunity to find commonalities, right? A good interview should feel like a conversation, not an interrogation, right? So if you find ways to connect with people, uh, of course, those those interviews are going to go better because they're going to be more like conversations. They're not going to be like interrogations, as this uh, picture suggests. And so uh, that's part of that initial research that I suggested uh, that you start with, right? So if you, for instance, um, I interviewed for an academic job once, and I knew that through my research that the major professor that I was going to be meeting with uh, was a graduate of the University of Florida. Now, having been uh, born and raised in the South and being a University of Tennessee fan my entire life, including earning my PhD from the University of Tennessee, our, Florida is our most hated rival. We hate them. We cannot stand them. We like to beat them in any and every sport that we play, right? So think about your own personal rivalries. If you're a sports fan, it's easy, easy to find those comparisons, right? It's like saying uh, Texas A&M uh, are friendly with the University of Texas, right? Not likely. So um, in my research, I saw that he was a University of Florida fan, and I thought, oh my gosh, how am I going to talk about football or commonalities with this person when I cannot stand Florida. So I go into the interview and I start to talk. He's like, hey, how are you doing? And I'm like, I'm doing well. Um, I was like, I noticed you were a graduate of the University of Florida. And he was like, oh, absolutely, yeah, I'm a Florida Florida graduate. And I said, oh, are you, are you a big football fan? He's like, oh, absolutely. And so with a big smile on my face, I looked right at him and I lied. I said, oh, that's awesome. Florida has such a great, amazing football team. <laughs> it was hard smiled, I said it, um, but I was looking for commonalities, and then we talked football, but I talked about it from his perspective, not mine. I didn't want to go in and say, oh, well, I'm a huge Tennessee fan, and I love college football, this and that. I talked about it from his perspective. I looked at it, uh, found the commonality, this love of football, but then I got him to talk about it, right, from his point of view, because as people are in our our very human nature is we love to talk about ourselves. So get people to talk about themselves. Uh, don't talk about you, and that conversation will flow better. That person will have a p more positive impression of you. So find commonalities. Um, you should always prepare for the expected. And, and prepare for the expected, meaning there are certain types of questions that will be asked in virtually every interview that you ever do. 
And one of those is this dreaded, what are your weaknesses? What are your weaknesses? They're clearly not wanting you to say, well, here's, I'm a bad communicator, or I have bad people skills, or I have bad time, time management skills. But you'll be amazed at the number of times that people will actually answer the question, what are your weaknesses, with a glaring weakness. That's not what that question is designed to do. So how you should approach that question, I tell my students a very easy answer to that that we can all use is to say something as follows. They say, what are your weaknesses? I say, well, you know, I used to be really nervous about public speaking, about speaking in front of large groups of people. Um, it was just something that always made me uncomfortable, and I really didn't have a lot of experience doing that. But I identified that that was an area that I could improve upon. And so when I was in college, I took a public speaking class. Um, it wasn't required to do so at the time, um, but I thought, you know what, I really, I would really like to improve in this area. And so I took the class, and it was a great class. I mean, I really had a great experience. I learned so much and grew, and as the semester progressed, I became more and more confident in my public speaking skills. And at the end of the semester, my professor told me that, um, that my speeches were some of the best some of the best of the semester, and I was really proud of that. And now, you know, I don't have that fear. I can get in front of a large group of people, or I can get in front of two or three uh, people, and I can speak comfortably and confidently, right? So if you pay attention there, you'll see that what I did was I took what could be perceived as a weakness, and then I showed how I took steps. One, I identified the weakness and then took steps uh, to correct the weakness and then turn that into a positive. So that's a very easy answer to that question that I that you can use. Steal that answer. Take that answer. What is your weakness? Well, I used to be afraid of public speaking. I took these classes. Dr. Curry said at the end of the semester that my speeches were some of the best that he had seen, right? So turn your weakness into a positive. That is an, a question that you are almost always guaranteed to be asked, right? I like this meme from the office. I have flaws. What are they? Well, I sing in the shower. Sometimes I spend too much time volunteering. Occasionally, I'll hit somebody with my car, right? If you've ever seen the office, you'll, you'll understand that. Um, one of the things that you should do also is have a polished elevator pitch, right? And so an elevator, uh, an elevator pitch or an elevator speech is a quick 60 seconds that sums up what you consider to be the most important information about you, right? So if you meet someone in passing or if someone asks you um, a very common question, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, you'll have an answer to that. So every day you're giving passing, passing chances to tell other people who you are. What do you say, right? Um, have a practiced elevator speech because it will help you. Uh, we're going to go back to that, but it's going to help you prepare for... Uh, actually, let's, let's deal with that now. So one of the common questions that you're going to be asked is... Essentially, every interview will start with, tell me a little bit about yourself, right? Tell me a little bit about yourself. And a mistake that students often make is they answer that question by telling them a little bit about themselves personally, right? And they'll say, well, I was born and raised in Texas. Uh, I graduated from um, X college uh, last year with a degree in business management and um, I'm really passionate about sports and uh, horses. Now on the surface, that sounds like a decent answer to tell me a little bit about yourself, right? You think, well, they wanna know a little bit about me, but they really don't. They don't wanna know the personal stuff. The answer, the way you should answer that question is you should approach that from the perspective of, um, your elevator pitch, right? What is it that the important information that you want them to know about you? So it can be a quick introduction, followed by what you're seeking, followed by experience, and then what you can offer. So you can say, for example, well, my name is Rick, and I graduated from the University of Tennessee with a PhD in communication and information. I am super excited to be here today uh, because I was uh, very interested when I saw your posting for this job 
because it is a perfect fit between my uh, professional experience and my educational uh, background. I am really looking for a teaching job where I can really focus uh, on teaching uh, students, helping them, uh, equip them with information uh, in both meaningful ways or in meaningful ways, uh, etc. I think I'd be a value to this organization, uh, and I'm excited to tell you a little bit about uh, why I feel that way today. Right. So there was nothing personal there in terms of hobbies and things like that. So you're taking that that uh, question that will always be asked of you. Tell me a little bit about yourself, and you're hitting them with a very specific, polished elevator pitch. And not most people will do that. And that is uh, why, if you do that, you're going to set yourself apart. You're going to be noticed, and you're going to be noticed from the very first question. And that. Uh, can really set you up to have success later in the interview. You should also prepare for the unexpected. And what I mean by that is things are going to come up. They're going to ask you questions that you simply didn't think of, that you simply didn't practice, that you simply don't really uh, have an answer for. And in those instances, don't try to make something up. Say, you know, actually, that's a really good answer, a really good question, and I haven't thought about that. Um, I'd be happy to research, um, do a little bit of research about that topic, um, and and get back with you. Right? It's okay to it's okay to say that. It's okay to say that you don't know, and people will respect that. Versus, they will very easily be able to tell if you're just making things up. Right? Um, always ask questions. You're going to be at a point in the interview where, generally, at the end of the interview, uh, they will ask. Uh, do you have any questions for us? And a lot of times, again, students make the mistake of saying, no, um, I really don't. Or maybe they say, yeah, um, can you tell me a little bit more about the benefits or what the pay or opportunities for advancement? Um, those are their own questions to ask. Those, I even had a student once, I said, well, how'd your interview go? And he says, well, it went really well. Um, I, they asked if I had any, if I had any questions, and I, I was very confident. So much so I said, when can I start? Needless to say, you didn't get the job, right? So ask questions. This is your opportunity to use some of that research that you um, had conducted uh, prior to the interview. Tell students, go online, look at their products, look at the services, what, it is, uh, what are they selling, right? Um, and then use that as an opportunity to show that you've done some research. So you can say things, for instance, like, well, I noticed that you have a, uh, a new product um, blank. You tell them the name of the product uh, coming out. And in, re in doing some research on the company, I saw that on your website and saw that you were really uh, expanding into this market. Uh, how do you see, uh, you, we're in a challenging business environment, um, how do you see uh, that moving forward? Right? How do you see uh, the business market for this company, situated for this company moving forward? So something, right? Find some product, some service, something that highlights that you've conducted some research. You could simply say, I, in doing some research, I saw that you guys had this new product or service and it looked really, really interesting to me. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Right? And so as an interviewer, as someone who has hired people at Bank of America, that would always trigger in my head, wow, this person has done some research. This person is really interested in, in who we are. You can hear the difference in that. Tell me a little bit more about that product or that service. Or, um, I know that the market is in a current, currently in a challenging place. How do you feel the company is best positioned? Um, to handle those challenges moving forward, right? You could ask those tough, tough questions. It will make you stand out in a positive way. So let's do a quick recap of some things that you can do um, in terms of having a successful interview. So you need to be prepared and you need to start that research ahead of time. You need to research the organization, know who they are, what it is that they sell, what's their mission statements, what their, what's their view on certain topics. You need to research the interviewer you need to have a set of prepared questions that you can ask, right? Like, right? Just like we just uh, discussed. You need to practice common interview questions, uh, like the ones that we mentioned, and you need to practice that elevator speech, which will answer the question of "Tell me a little bit about yourself." Some fundamentals um, 
Again, seem very basic, but I do want to talk about be on time. Research suggests that if you're late, even by five minutes, 99.9% uh, .9 of the time you will not get the job. So uh, students often say, well, how early should I arrive? I say, well, you should be there about 10 minutes ahead of time. And by be there, I mean be in front of the person, uh, be in the office saying, hey, I'm here for my 10 o'clock interview. You need to drive that route ahead of time, and that's important because maybe there's construction, maybe there's delays, maybe there's something that takes that what normally would be a 15-minute commute and turns that into a 30-minute commute. You need to know that ahead of time. Uh, leave your cell phone in the car. Don't even allow yourself the opportunity to forget to turn that off, right? There's nothing worse than a phone in your bag or in your pocket vibrating because um, they can hear that uh, and really bad if it rings. So just leave it in the car. Don't give yourself the opportunity to do that. My students always laugh at this, but I say, you know, you shouldn't park right in front of the door, right? You should park off to the side uh, don't smoke. If you're a smoker, don't be standing outside the building smoking. I used to sit in my office on the fourth floor, and I could see uh, I could it overlooked the parking lot. So I would have people coming in to interview uh, for positions with Bank of America, and I could see them out in the in the parking lot pacing, or I could see them out in the parking lot smoking, um, and then they would walk they would walk up, they'd come in, and then be like, yep, I just saw them, and so. You don't want to do that. Just park to the side, don't smoke, those sorts of things. Uh, just be out of sight until you actually uh, get there. Now when you do get there, you need to walk in with confidence. So be in what I call interview mode from the moment you walk in that door. So walk in with confidence. Smile. Make small talk with the secretary. Don't be fidgety or appear nervous. Sit upright with both feet flat on the floor and one hand on your portfolio. Portfolios matter, right? You don't take your interview in, or don't take your resume into the interview in a manila folder, all right? Have a nice portfolio. I just bought my brother one, a recent college graduate applying for jobs, bought him one for like 18 bucks at Staples. A real nice faux leather portfolio, uh, had his resumes printed off on resume paper, and it gives, him, it gives you something nice to have. Uh, in front of you, you can also have some note paper in there uh, with your um, with a pen, so you can make notes. It just sends a very polished impression to people. Uh, research suggests it only takes about two seconds from the moment you say hello for someone to make a, an impression about you. So that's why you want to look professional. You want to be dressed professionally. You want to be smiling. Um, you don't want to appear nervous, etc. When people ask you questions, never answer with a closed-ended response. A closed-ended response would be like yes or no, right? So you always want to uh, answer a question by giving them detailed information about that. Uh, when asked a broad-ended question, use the opportunity to interject information about your background experiences. So I'll say, well, tell me about a time you were uh, recognized at work. Well. Actually, let's see, I think back, and when I was in banking with uh, Wells Fargo, when I was in investment banking, I started off and I had the opportunity uh, to work in a small uh, group of people, and, or in a small team, and blah, 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 right? So use it as an opportunity. You should have um, a list of what you consider to be your professional honors and awards, right? So here's a list from my resume. Um, of professional honors and awards and I have that attached to my resume um, or separate from my resume um, and I, I give that to uh, the interviewer uh, when, when I sit down with them right so here's my resume here's a list of my professional honors and awards because maybe they haven't seen it maybe it wasn't part of the questionnaire or the original um, information that you submitted so give them the opportunity to see that information and to have that positive impression um, of you. And in closing, I ask students to think about this. How will you stand out? How will you stand out? In today's professional workforce, the professional market for jobs, students often have very similar educational experiences. 
They have very similar grades. They have very similar experiences in clubs and organizations. And so ask yourself, what makes me stand out? Why am I the best candidate? And it's going to come down to some small things. You can talk about public speaking. You can talk about people skills. You can talk about unique experiences, right? But you need to know that ahead of time, right? It's part of your own research. Not only just research the organization, but make sure you're polished and you and you keep a track of the things that you have done that will help you stand out when it comes to the job market. So you need to make a list just like I did and keep track of that. And you can always have that and just always add to it. And that will help you um, really identify how you will stand out. Hopefully you learned uh, some, some tips and techniques today that may be useful for you uh, in the future as you interview.